Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. I hope you're all well and looking forward to this weekend, even though we are in a very strange situation in the world, but I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And well, it gives me a little bit more time to do some videos. So let's go back to what we did last time round. So in episode 13, we had the absolute honor of having Taser here. And he put together this beautiful little village based around one on the island and it really did come out well. Really, really impressed with how he did so. I wasn't expecting anything less to be honest with Taser. We know how good he is at detailing and making realistic builds, but it was great to see him doing a little UK build for us. And yep, I am still in the workings of getting some other YouTubers involved in this uh, series as well to do some guest builds. So. Again, let me know in the comment section below who you would like to see next attempting to do a little UK village for our island. Once this video was released, I did actually have a little chat with Mac Welshman. He watched the video and he decided that there wasn't enough UK churches on the workshop. And he actually designed and created the exact church for this location. And once this was done, I had a quick word with Taser and he was more than happy for me to add this in in place of the church he used previously. And boy, is it a nice church. It is pure British. It really is. There are not too many British churches on the workshop, but now we have this one. And also, there is going to be another one available in the workshop by Rick4000. So for you guys who are doing British builds or anything European, there's a lot more churches now available. So make sure you check out those. I'll link the items in the description below. Now, not only did Mac Welshon do the church, he'd done some more gravestones as well. We've got a selection on the workshop already, but these ones fitted in perfectly. And, well, you can never have too many of one asset, can you, when you're creating in this game? So a big shout out to Mac Welshman for creating this church. Fantastic model as usual. We don't expect anything less. And it just finishes off this little build now, in my opinion. And, yeah, really, really excited to use it myself. So what are we going to be doing in today's episode? Well, today's episode is going to be a bit of a expansion episode. So if you recall previously, Rick4000 created a village not too far away from the location that Taser has picked. And what I wanted to do is connect the two up today. So it's going to be a lot of rural building, a lot of farm placement, and just trying to take in the countryside theme here. I really want to have a go at creating these beautiful luscious grass areas and greenery and fields all over the place that you tend to see very commonly in these sort of remote areas on the island. So that's the idea for today's episode, to try and advance this area out, try and meet the two together and see if we can get a really nice looking landscape. And I actually really enjoyed this aspect of this build because it really made me think about different ways that we can make this land look realistic. So there's a lot of different decals we can use, there's a lot of placements of fields and that was the thing I was really trying to get into my head to start with is placing the fields down because you don't have fields so so close together in perfect sort of symmetry. Fields, certainly in the UK, aren't built like that. They may be elsewhere but in the UK it's not really like that. You do have some fields that are parallel to each other and they do look nice and neat from an air and bird's eye view but there's a lot of times where the fields are just a mismatch of different types of shapes and uh, sort of lengths and sizes and i kind of did a bit of research into this and it does tend to be a lot about the obviously it's, it's down to the soil to be fair in, in starting point but if you're thinking about it in terms of a designing aspect you need to kind of also consider the contours of the map that you're building on so things just like you wouldn't place a nice crop field um, at an area at the bottom of a hill where all the water will build up and end up creating dirty puddles. It's, you know, thinking like that may be a little bit over the top for some people, but it has really helped me in my designing and building of this particular episode and just in general, really trying to think a bit more outside the box into real life scenarios and obviously the famous Google Maps is our best friend in a lot of these situations and it does really aid you to get a different sort of feel and look about things, especially if you're working on a completely flat panel of land. Looking into Google Maps and just taking some shapes or an area that is quite similar to what you're working on, copying that and placing it down, 
it really does come alive and I think also the combination of trees that you tend to use as well is um, quite key to making things look realistic and we're blessed by having so many on the workshop and I I must say I ha there are some more trees that I would like to add into the collection that I'm working on the majority of the time I'm only really using sort of six or seven different types of trees and bushes certainly in this aspect of the build anyway so I would like to do a bit more work into getting some more trees into the builds and making things look a little bit more maybe more realistic by doing so so that's something that I will consider doing but in general I think that's a good sort of starting point when you're working on these sort of builds and also I just want to go back to a point as well that was um, made a few times actually on the last video a few pointers of um, when is the uh, the save game going to be available and uh, what's the, the theme and LUT etc etc and I have been working on that um, it's not quite ready yet just because I keep changing my opinion on what theme to go with I think the theme that I've chosen has changed probably about three times since I agreed that I would put together the save game for you guys to have a little play yourself so I'm still trying to determine exactly what aspects of the theme mixer is going to be my official theme um, each time I do a different build it does change and that kind of makes sense really because when you're building in a, a built up sort of town area the theme you're using is a lot different to the theme that I'm using here in the countryside builds and the village builds and it's a case of trying to get the two of them to match up perfectly or at least they can complement each other in the right ways and that's what I'm trying to work on now um, in regards to the actual map itself the map I am probably just going to take the current save game um, and I will probably just delete everything on it just so you've got a base map that you can play with so that'll be the sort of blank version of that um, further onwards from there I know a lot of you guys want to actually have a look at the map in a lot more detail based on what's already been built so I will probably do a, um, a weekly or fortnightly upload of the island when I've built something new onto it um, which I'll probably post onto my Patreon or something similar um, which then you can go on load the game the well you can load the exact save game that I'm working on at that point in time have a look over the build that's just been created and um, yeah have a little play yourself so that is still in the making so hopefully maybe <laughs> at some point next month especially now that there's a bit more free evening times I can probably get away with doing that so Yes, it is on the cards, it is in the works, so don't worry, it will be coming at some point. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out and I'll let you know when it's ready. Now back into the build, you saw that I was also working on the contours when I was placing down these um, trees as well moments ago. But this is another interesting release on the workshop, again by Matt Welshman. He is treating us a lot <laughs> in this series and in general for UK and rural builds. And these are the sort of tractor tracks. You'll see these quite commonly over fields where the tractor has gone up and down the same root of grass so many times it has left this little dirt track. Um, and I believe Mac Welshon has released two versions of this. One is the single lane and there's a double lane as well. So you can actually get your tractors if you have a um, vehicle based tractor rather than the prop to go up and down that which would be really cool. And they do work as roads as well. Um, Personally for me, I'm using it more as a, well, a prop, so to speak. I don't want people driving up and down these, so I actually remove that fact from them anyway. Um, so it works for me. I just wanted to have something that looked like, you know, a route for the tractors to go around. And especially because this part of the land is quite a lot of, you know, copy and pasting of different, of, well, of the same sort of area. I was thinking of a way to bridge the gap between the two and you often do find there are little dirt tracks or um, pre-made and cut roads that go from one side of a field to another and I think that's a perfect little um, network to use then to allow people to go across the farmland um, and sort of see the difference between the two lands that way. Another thing as well I wanted to chat about today was the, um, the number of live streams I've been doing recently. Um, again I can't promise that that will carry on I have done one a week for the last couple of weeks now and I do intend to do another one this weekend as best I can um, obviously the current 
state of the world <laughs> is allowing me to do a bit more in terms of um, live streams got a bit more time on my hands for the evenings etc and I've actually really really enjoyed it I mean I do naturally enjoy live streaming anyway because I get to communicate with you guys in first person <laughs> so to speak um, and I really do enjoy the sort of feedback you guys give as well it's um, great to see what you're thinking as I build and I think as well maybe for you guys I know a few of you have commented that you really enjoy watching how I do things step by step and you know you know looking at these time lapses I do cut a lot of stuff out and when I say a lot of stuff I mean I try do a lot of trial and error there's a lot of repetitive stuff that isn't very interesting to watch but I mean for you guys if you wanted to see how I build and you're kind of maybe you're doing your own build and you're not sure if you're really doing it the same as I am in that sense you can see that we are on the same path so I mean this game can take 10 minutes to build a beautiful city or it can take 10 hours to build a beautiful city it's all dependent on what you're doing and what your class or classification is on beauty and the game itself is beautiful let's not get that wrong in any means or or anything like that it is a beautiful game regardless um, and you can make things look beautiful in vanilla or when you're detailing so yeah I think I'm gonna try my best to keep on doing some live streams um, I've got a bit of a backlog now of Isle of Wight videos I think there's gonna be at least two more to come um, after this one which I'll probably spread out on a weekly basis and then I'm gonna be moving back onto Monaco so for you fans of Monaco it's coming <laughs> and we're gonna be working on some really exciting stuff but I'm not gonna talk about that much for now because we're on to a very interesting part of the build one that took me a lot of time and it's one I really wanted to trial out and experiment so let's go into this in a bit more detail so I didn't actually get all the recording down because it took a lot a lot of time but you can see what I was going for here I wanted to try and create a almost like a cliff falling look <laughs> it's a really bad description I know but on the island itself obviously there's these luscious beautiful white cliffs but there's parts where they are corroding away and there's obviously the dirt and grit inside it kind of shining through and it's not as pure chalk as the rest of the cliffs and that's what I wanted to give an approach of a look for here and there is a number of decals I put down a lot of different theme textures I used um, but I think it worked out quite nicely <laughs> it looks really good from certain angles I mean the difficulty with putting some decals down onto very strange um, contours or terrain form whatever you're going to class it as that sometimes the decals don't quite line up well and you'll see there's a few sort of almost like solid um, horizontal lines across and that's just where the decals didn't quite match up to so you can do some really amazing stuff with this game and that was just a, a little tiny little experiment with um, with decals and um, the painter so that kind of was was a fun little experiment and I'm gonna try and do a few more of those over this course of the the series so um, yeah keep an eye out for those but that does bring us close to the end of this episode a little bit shorter than usual but we still got quite a lot done and we have bridged that gap nicely between these two projects both Rick 4000 and Taser you'll be able to see in the cinematics how well they do blend in together and I think we'll probably have to do a few more videos like this at some point maybe on a live stream instead and really get things blended in nicely together otherwise guys thank you all very much for watching keep an eye out on my social media for any updates and news and i'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching keep safe and all the best